As a thank you to everyone watching our videos, we're giving away a 15% off code to our Uniblend Premium add-on using code UNIBLEND15. Thank you and enjoy the video. Hello everyone and welcome to Dynamic Paint but more advanced, right? In this one we're going to take a look at Particle Systems and Dynamic Paint, which is a great combination together. So we're going to take a look at that and how to set that up and how to use it, right? So uh, let's dive in. We got our default scene with the default objects. I'm just going to delete um, my cube, I guess. There we go. Delete it. And remember what I said in the intro to Dynamic Paint. If we set up a Dynamic Paint system, we need a canvas and an emitter, right? So what we're going to do is set up a canvas first. And I'm just going to show this with a plain old plane, right? So shift A, a mesh, a plane. And let's right away give this some subdivisions in the modifier panel at the modifier and search for a subdivision surface. Set this to be about seven or eight even, right? It can handle it and set this to simple. And um, so we keep our nice hard corners, right? Beautiful. Let's add um, an emitter object now, right? Because we're actually not going to work with an brush object, but with a brush particle system. And that requires a little bit of setting up, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new object that's going to be my emitter. So hit Shift A, Mesh, and we can just go for um, a plane as well. And let's subdivide this, or does a geometry node. Let's subdivide this, subdivision modifier, three times. And let's scale this down so it's nicely somewhere above my surface, somewhere GZ there, right? Beautiful. That works and scale it down a little bit. There we go. Now let's add a particle system on this emitter, right? And what I'm trying to achieve here is that we're gonna shoot up some particles into the sky and it's gonna fall down again. Something like a splatter or some at least some some kind of liquid falling down on the surface. Or perhaps even perhaps we can even shoot something on the surface, right? To create some indents. We'll see. So go to the particles and hit plus to set up a new particle system. And we're gonna set up an emitter right away. See, you can see we're emitting particles. It is quite big. So perhaps we can just change the viewport display to be a little bit smaller here. There we go. Beautiful. And you can see that from the start, let me set the end at like 100 for now. It is just going to emit particles and they fall down. That's because the normal velocity is quite low. Right, the, uh, the normal direction is straight up from this plane and it is one meter per second, which is not fast. So let's set this at like 10 and see what happens, right? So they are now much, much, much faster. Maybe four will do. Or yeah, there we go. That, that's a little bit better. And we can add some random velocity as well to make them spread a little bit better. Set this at like three. Too much. Way too much. One. One is better, right? There we go. They stay nicely in the plane, but they are nice and scattering. Now, I don't want these particles to just keep on spraying, right? I want them to go out in a burst, which means that we just set the end frame to about five, and then they will spray out all together in a burst, more like that, right? So we can also set this to 10, maybe that's better. There we go. And we can set the ends to 50, because that's when the particles have been expelled. So we can do some magic there. So uh, to be able to get uh, some uh, indentation or dynamic paint going on, we need to add a render object first, right? Which means that we link an object to each of these points. To do that, we can open up the render tab in our particle settings, and we can set this as render as an object, right? So now everything disappears because we don't have a render object. So hit Shift A, Mesh, and find an icosphere. Right, something like this works fine to uh, act as our little um, emitter. Let's see if we can get away with one. I don't think so. Let's leave this at two and shade this smooth. And let's set this off to the side. Okay, and let's scale this down because it's too big. Something like that. And press Ctrl A, apply scale. There we go. So, in our particle settings, right? If you can't find it, just click on the plane in your outliner and let's rename this particles and let's rename this to be our canvas, right? Because that's the canvas for dynamic paint. 
Right, so then we go back to our particle system and we go to object or the rendering and we set this instance object, just hit the eyedropper and go to icosphere there. Right, so if we play this now, you can see we got some icospheres being emitted by our particle system. Now we can set the scale to be like 0.2, seems about right, and we can add a little bit of randomness of about 0.35, there we go. So now they're all a little bit different in scale, which always works beautifully. All right, so now let's actually set up this dynamic paint system, shall we? So to do that, we need a canvas and a brush. So click on the canvas. Let's go to the physics, add a dynamic paint and set this to be canvas and add a canvas, right? Now, by default, this is going to be set at paint, but just to, to make sure that this works and perhaps we'll leave it at it as well. I'm going to set this to be displaced. It's the easiest way to see what is going on. Now, to use our particle system, we need to set our particle emitter to be our brush, right? So not the individual icosphere, but the actual particle system, right? So click on your particle system, click on dynamic paint, and set this to be our brush and add brush. Okay, that is a good start. Now, we know from the intro to dynamic paint that our canvas requires a brush collection. All right, so I'm just going to do that. So we have a nice collection that is separate from the rest of our scene that includes our brush. All right, so click on the, on the particles, hit M, new, and name this brush. There we go. All right, so then in our canvas, we can set this to be our brush. There we go. Now, we need to do another step. All right, because we're working with a particle system, we actually need to specify to Blender that we want the particle system to be the brush. Right, so click on our brush, which is the particle system. Now to use our particle systems as the brush, we need to set it up under the source. So change that from mesh volume to particle system and set your particle system to be the particle system. Beautiful. Now by default, this is all way too big. All right, our holes are too big. Um, it still looks quite nice, um, but it's, it's too, too crazy, right? And this is mainly because we have a solid radius effect that is too much. We can set this to be like 0.05 and see how it looks. So it changes significantly. And the other, the, the other value that is messing around with us is the smooth radius. Because it's going to try to just smooth everything and it's going to make it look a little bit worse. right? So let's set this to zero and see how that affects our radius as well. So you can see that's looking way better. We can set this to be even lower, like 0.02. There we go. And that should fix things quite nicely, right? So now we've got some small indentations based on our particle system. Isn't that cool? So you can use this for, for example, um, a shotgun bullet on a surface, right? So I can just set this back to zero. I can move my emitter up, right? This is going to be our shotgun. And we can actually rotate this, R, Y, 90, I guess. Nope, 180, of course, 180, there we go. And now if we play this, it's gonna just shoot down like a shotgun, like much, much, much faster, right? And we can set the speeds of our particles to be even more like eight. And let's play this, a nice shotgun, right? So let's set our end time to be four. It's gonna shoot everything at the same time. Yeah, beautiful. Right, so let's randomize this to be three, perhaps, so we get more of a spread. There we go. Right, quite interesting. Quite beautiful, quite beautiful, quite beautiful. All right, so that is, for example, one way to create shotgun indentations on your servers, right? And um, you can use the same thing, that's a same particle system for, for example, splatters, right? Blood splatters, whatever. In that case, you can just go to your canvas and go to your physics and set this from a displace to be paint, for example. Now, remember that we need to set up the output values, plus and plus. There we go. And let's go to our brush and set this paint color to be white, right? Which is F, 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 and the hex. There we go. And we can go to our canvas and set the initial color to be black. There we go. And then we can go to render view for a sec. Go to shader editor, hit new, right, beautiful. And then we can hit shift A, attribute, and type in DP paint map. And there we go, right? If we now play this, 
you can see our particles leave a nice trail, right? A nice splatter. And then you could even add a little bit of a spread effect. Let's replay this. So it spreads out a little bit. Alright, perhaps this is a little bit too much though. <laughs> Point five. And we can also enable drip, for example. Right, if I now rotate my canvas a little bit. There we go. And splatter this on top. It will even drip down a little bit. You can see some blood splatters right and we can also add a little bit of shrinking right so it also shrinks the longer it goes on right beautiful very very cool so that is pretty much what i wanted to show here uh, using particle systems right so we can up the number by a lot to create more particles five thousand chance there we go so this is incredibly useful to also create for example texture masks right which means that if i now go to my object and we add an image texture shift a image texture and we set this to be new and name this drip i don't know and set so this will be i'm just going to make this 2k 2 that's for 8 that's for 8 and swipe your window down set the image editor now add your drip <laughs> um image save whenever you add a new image here, make sure to go to it in your image editor and save your image, right? Otherwise, it will be lost next time you open a Blender, which is incredibly annoying. There we go, save. And then, with this selected, um, we can go to our render, set this to cycles, set your max samples for your render to be four, plenty. And then we can go to bake. We can set this to be bake type, um, a diffuse, a uh, disable direct and indirect light, and we can start bake. Give it a second. There we go. We actually bake this image texture now. So we can just discard this, you know, and we can just connect this to the base color. And we need to save this first. Otherwise, it's just gonna not refresh. Then just, you know, click this away. And open it back up. There we go. Drip. Right. So now you always have this as a texture. So if you need to reuse this somewhere on like a an object that needs some splatters on it, you can just add this texture mask, right? And you can use this, for example, for the alpha of your object as well, which means that now we just have a nice mask of of like a nice splatter, right? Which means that we can disable the subdivisions work with a plane with four vertices and have this as a nice mask that we can overlay or use as a texture on other objects. We can use this as a bump map right into the height. Set this to be your normal map. You can just crank down that strength a little bit so you have a little bit of that nice in um, a bumpiness going on, right? We can add a color ramp for the base color. Color ramp, there we go. Set this to be your base color. And set this to be from like a darkish red to a nice lighter red. Swipe them a little bit closer, perhaps. This may be too light red. Make it a bit darker. Reduce the roughness a little bit. There we go. Strength down just slightly. And now you have a nice splatter of blood. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you now know how to use particle systems in combination with dynamic paint. And as you can see, you can create some really nice results. You can create your own textures, your own masks um, in, in quite a very fast manner. Um, so if you did enjoy that, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We'll enjoy any one of those and then we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.